こごわい Let's open up a web browser, Google Chrome for instance. We want to go to hobbyking.com. I want to show you some of the parts that we're going to use. Go to multi rotors, accessories. We're going to click on the top link USB ASP programmer. This is the device that we're going to use to flash the speed controls. We're going to flash them with the Simon K firmware, which makes them an excellent choice for multi rotor applications. Everything that would usually need to be programmed is already taken care of, as well as making it a better speed control. Go to the speed controls 20 to 39 amp. Scroll down. We're going to be using the Hobby King 20 amp ESC with a 3 amp u b e c k These are very nice speed controls. Uh, 20 amp is probably all you really need unless you're doing a heavy lift copter.、Uh, they're only $6.97 a piece. They're, they're super cheap and they perform flawlessly. The other speed control that you can use that will use the same firmware in the same way, or you can be flashed the exact same way, is the Hobby King 30 amp ESC with 3 amp u b e c k These are essentially the same speed controls, however, this one uses different FETs. But the programming is the same. These are just a bit more expensive at $886, and they're usually back stock. So, to start, we need to go ahead and install Flash on the computer if it isn't already. And we're going to need to install both 32 bit and 64 bit for the Lazy Zero Flash tool. I've already got it installed, but for if you haven't, you wouldn't have that little pop up and you would actually have to click the install. And you're going to want to do that on a 32 bit operating system like Chrome, and as well as on a 64 bit operating system like Internet Explorer 64, so you can make sure you get both versions.、Uh, I don't know if it's truly required, but I had issues when I didn't have them both. Now I'm going to take you to the actual thread on flashing. The speed controls, it's the RC Time Return G Hobby Wing. This is located on RC Groups, and I'll, I'll put the link in the description. But we want to scroll down and, and click on the list, and this is actually a list of all the speed controls that are supported right now. And it has links to pictures of the front and back so you can see what it is.、And、if you scroll down just a bit, you can see that we're going to be doing the F20A, and it requires the BSNFET.hex. So, we can go to the side and go to download firmware. This is all the firmware choices that we have. It's actually one zip file contains all the hex files for the different speed controls that you'll need.、Uh, from what I understand or from what I can tell, it's, it's as the progression of the firmware, they've uploaded new versions.、Uh, when in doubt, Download the one that's the most downloaded. So I always choose the one that has 1571 downloads. And just go click on that, and then you're going to extract that zip file to some place that's convenient for you. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do it at this time. But it's a simple process. I mean, you literally click on the link,、uh, save as, whatever you want to do, and you'll download the file as a zip, or you can get it as a tar.gz. I'm not a l e t e hacker, so I don't need tar.gz files. Once you have that, let's go ahead and actually get the program. Again, I'll put this link in the description, but this is the Flash tool by Lazy Zero. This makes flashing the speed controls and even your KK board super easy. We're just going to want to download the Windows version that's、uh, the latest stable, not the beta. Download that and then Extract it to some place convenient for later use.、And、then we're going to go ahead and get a driver for our USB ASP programmer. Again, I'll put the link in the description. We're going to scroll down and we want to get the driver for Windows. Just click on the link, download the driver file, and then you're going to want to extract it into a file. 
or into a folder that's convenient because we'll have to install the driver as soon as we plug in the USB, USB ASP programmer the first time. Windows won't automatically detect it. So just find a folder. This one I didn't have installed, or at least I couldn't find it, so I'm reinstalling it, showing you how easy it is. Once it's installed, go ahead and plug in the USB ASP driver. Click on where it says found new driver or new device, and then you're going to want to stop it from doing a Windows search. Then go to the start button, computer, right click it, properties, and then go to device manager. And you're going to see USB device that has an error sign on it update driver browse computer and then go ahead and browse the folder that you had extracted it to earlier you don't have to go into the subfolders as long as you keep check subfolders checked uh, on the original box then hit OK go ahead and next it's gonna error out and say it's not signed but have it installed anyways it's perfectly fine it takes just a second to install if this is the first time you've installed it, it might take a little bit longer. There it is. It's, it's already done. Just close everything back out. You'll see that now it's not aired and it is actually installed. So this is what you get from Hobby King. 20 amp speed control. Comes in a nice static proof bag. I would get the trusty razor blade and slit it open. doesn't come with any accessories I mean all the wires are bare there's no bullet connectors no Deans no XT60 connector nothing it's just the wire it does have a nice uh, iron ferrite uh, core on it so that's not bad this is the USAB programmer USB ASP programmer this is the pinout you'll need to pause here because you're going to know the pinout for later on this is a 10 pin or a 10 wire cable that it comes with and again, this is the pinout for when you make your connection with the speed control, so pause here. This is a little connector I made out of uh, breadboard pins. I just hot glued them together and insert them in it into that tin wire connector. And on the speed control, we're actually going to look for the pads to program. And they're right in this corner on the motor side. You can fill a ridge. There's like capacitors or resistors that line it. You can fill a ridge. So let's take a knife and we're going to cut it open. Go about halfway over and then straight down. And trim that side. Be careful when you're doing this. You don't want to cut too deep. You don't want to cut into traces or anything foolish like that. So really just score it. Pop it up a little bit and then you'll be able to remove that shrink wrap where the pads are. And this is the pad pinup coming up. So you need to match those pins to the controller so that you can flash it. You can use any type of metal connector. I used some type of push pin. I'm not sure what they are for like a breadboard. I just used hot glue to glue them together and it gave me the great the perfect spacing to actually put it on the pads as you see on the speed control. And I just I just use pressure to hold on while I'm flashing. So let's, let's actually flash it real quick. I want to go ahead and open up the folder that you put the flash tool in. And you're going to click on the serial command. Run it. We want to set the USB clone. USB port. Standard. Baud rate. And you're going to select 8 bit Atmel chip. And then you can select down here the different types of firmware. And we need BSN FET. 
So just scroll down and you can select it and then it gives you the available software. And if you're connected to the internet, when you hit flash, it will actually download the file and flash the ESC. When I'm doing this, I'm not, and I usually never do stay connected to the internet when I'm flashing. So I actually browse to the driver files that I had downloaded, and I select the BSN FET, and I flash it directly. And this is what it looks like when you flash. Really quick. It takes like 8 seconds, and you're done. Now what I'm going to show you next is what it actually looks like to flash it. So this is me going ahead and, and getting the program set up. Plug in the USB ASP programmer. You'll see a little LED light come on. The computer recognize it. Get the speed control ready. Go ahead and make sure everything is in place. And then mess with the software. I'm, I'm actually showing you what I did, what you had just seen on, on the desktop. I'm going through and configuring the software so that I can flash the speed control. We just put the, the pins under the pad, put a little pressure, and click the button once, and you can see it on the screen flashing. It's that quick, it's done. I want to go ahead and let you hear what a standard speed control sounds like pre flashed. And this is what a speed control sounds like flashed.